Here's another crazy mistake for you guys. It happens very quickly in the episode, The Two Faces of Squidward. I love this episode. He turns into handsome Squidward, but enough about handsome squids or handsome sea creatures. Here's the mistake. Excuse me for just a second. <laughs> Do you mind? I'm trying to work at a fast food restaurant. You might want to try it sometime. I sure would, Squidward. That's out. Hey, wait a minute. SpongeBob, you already do work at a fast food restaurant. <laughs> yeah! Daddy, 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 So, when SpongeBob and Patrick are in the kitchen, as you can see, the end condiments on this shelf right here, the end condiments are ketchup and mayonnaise. Okay, it goes ketchup and mayonnaise. You can see it right here, remember. But in the next few scenes, this completely changes. And now it's mustard, then ketchup. First it was ketchup, then mayo. Now it's mustard, then ketchup. I guess they could have changed the order, but considering this all happens in a matter of seconds, this was definitely a mistake, guys. And it's kind of a bad one. But hey, let's keep it moving over to another episode full to the brim with mistakes. Next up is the episode House Sitting for Sandy. This is a really good one. It's basically all about Sandy making the terrible decision of letting Spongebob and Patrick watch her tree dome and just, yeah, as you can imagine, Spongebob and Patrick are not the most responsible people or sponge and starfish. So yeah, it doesn't go very well. Here's some clips. Now pay attention as I clue you in on some of your more elaborate responsibilities. This is the robot warehouse. It's where I keep all my robots. All you gotta do is come in here and count every single one of these robots and make sure none of them's gone missing. Patrick, no! You you promised me you weren't gonna touch anything. Well, now that that's settled, let's see where I can. Yes, Patrick. Uh, can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? Patrick, how many times do we? Yeah, this episode is crazy. Like, at one point, they accidentally activate a bunch of Sandy's robots and just, yeah, havoc ensues. But anyways, we're here for mistakes, guys. Some spicy mistakes that you missed. I'm sure you guys missed this one. Keep those eyes peeled. It's not as bad as it seems. Oh, yeah? What made you say that? <laughs> Not everything's broken. <gasps> Sandy! How was the inventor's convention? Funny y'all should ask that. I brought home something real handy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so this first mistake is very complicated. So listen closely, guys. Like, listen carefully, all right? When Sandy aims the rubble reversal ray, SpongeBob is holding the beaker, as you can see right here, right? When Sandy fires it and SpongeBob and Patrick scream before the beam goes over them, SpongeBob is now not holding the beaker. I mean, I don't know how he just put it down. But then, when the tree dome is fixed, um, why does SpongeBob yet again have the beaker again? It's like a weird continuity error. First he has it, then he doesn't have it, then he has it again. I am nitpicking. Picking, but this is technically like a continuity error and it's kind of a weird one but let's move over to our final episode today it's the patrick star show and this one's really good guys i know you guys are not expecting this mistake let's do it as you guys know squidward is a very depressed character and you know i kind of get it squidward is very grumpy and he can be kind of rude but he's also very misunderstood no one acknowledges what squidward's good at in life and i kind of get it everyone just roasts him and is mean it's his own fault but anyways our next Next episode is Are You Happy Now? And this episode is all about SpongeBob trying to help Squidward find a happy moment in life. It's kind of sad. Here's some clips. What's your happiest memory, Squidward? Um, let me think. <sighs> I guess I don't have a happiest memory. Oh, well. You don't have a happiest memory? So what? How can you live without a happiest memory? You're right, SpongeBob. I don't have a happiest memory. This is horrible. 
Don't worry, Squidward. I'll help you make a happiest memory. Like I said, this episode's really sad. Like, Squidward just literally doesn't have a happy memory. But thank goodness for SpongeBob actually trying to be his friend. But anyways, let's get into the mistakes. This episode has two. Here's the first one. I want to see if you guys can find it without me assisting you. Keep those eyes peeled. Hi, uh, I'd like to order a Krabby Patty, please. <laughs> okay, can someone else take my order? This is horrible. Don't worry, Squidward. I'll help you make a happiest memory. You love music, right, Squidward? Mm -hmm. Then this'll definitely be your happiest memory. Oops, that was a sour note. This is not my happiest memory. This one is pretty bad, as when SpongeBob says, oops, that was a sour note, Incidental 104, who is sitting right behind him, is missing her shirt. This is a kid show, so the fact that she's literally just sitting there without a shirt on is very inappropriate. Like, this was a bad, how do you even make this mistake? Seriously, like, how did the animators forgot to give her a shirt, but still drew her, you know? Anyways, let's move on to mistake number two. <laughs> Let me see that. The Krusty Krab work schedule? What's so great about this? It's my happy book. The Krusty Krab is where all of my happiest memories occurred. Oops, I accidentally burned up your memories. Don't worry, Squidward. I have a whole cabinet of backups. This one isn't that big of a deal, I guess. But as you can see in this shot, Squidward drops the work schedule book on the grill and it just burns immediately. Like it's looking very crispy. But what about this scene when it's lying on the grill while SpongeBob is reading it? Why doesn't it burn? It's just a weird continuity error. When Squidward puts it down, it burns, right? It's flammable. But when SpongeBob's reading it, nothing happens to it. So just some weird decisions in this episode for sure. Let's move over to our final episode of today. It's really bad. Be prepared. First up is the episode Arbor Day Disarray, which is a new episode from season 13. This episode only aired in June, so yeah, it's very new, and it has some mistakes. Here's the first one. Let's see if you guys can catch it. I've used the power of science to make special acorns that'll grow into saltwater trees. Oh. Oh. <laughs> You need to talk to him. Hi, I'm SpongeBob. This one is easy to catch because it's a very blatant mistake. Like the animators, I don't know how they missed this one, but take a look at Squidward's face. Yeah, not only is this Grumster missing his eyebrows, but he's also missing his forehead wrinkles. Normally Squidward looks like this as most of you guys know, but in this one shot, I guess the animators were feeling a little lazy because yeah, Squidward's face is missing some detail, but let's keep it moving. There's another mistake in this episode. I want you guys to catch it. A little while later. Hello, Sandy. Oh, howdy, SpongeBob. How's your new tree doing? Are you talking to it? My tree's been doing all the talking. Are you feeling okay, SpongeBob? Hang on. Barky wants to talk to you. Why did you leave me with this giggling hunk of holes? <laughs> yeah, what is that horrible noise? What? It's okay, buddy. Talent isn't everything. Huh. In your case, it's nothing. Hey, Squidward, your barber called. He said he's sorry. Should have stayed. This one isn't that big of a deal because it is a cartoon, guys. Like, SpongeBob has a lot of mistakes, but sometimes I am self-aware of the fact that it's due to it being a kid's cartoon. But, um, where is Patrick's house, guys, in this one shot right here? It should be right beside Squidward's, but it's missing. This right here is Conch Street, and as you can see, we got SpongeBob, Squidward, and Patrick's house all on one street. But in this one shot, I guess the animators were feeling, again, kinda lazy, and just thought it would be easy not to draw Patrick's house. House, right? But again, it's a cartoon, not a big deal, but let's keep it going, guys, because this next episode has a crazy mistake. Hi, 
muddy bubble bus, I reckon you're hankering for a delicious new dish. <laughs> Smoky stupidity. Sandy Cheeks has come up with a lot of revolutionary ideas for the Krusty Krab. For example, the episode where she comes up with a growth hormone that makes Krabby Patties bigger. But season 13's Hot Crust Nuts is definitely her biggest endeavor yet, with her making these nuts that do this. Here, take a look for yourself. I brought a little something of my own from home, from home, from home, from home. <laughs> Smoking barbecue nuts. There is no outside food allowed at the Krusty Krab. Come on, SpongeBob. I won't spill the nuts if you won't. <laughs> Try one. <laughs> That's enough. I'm confiscating these unauthorized acres. Now this episode has two mistakes in total. Here's the first one, it's very easy to miss, and it has to do with the chum bucket. <laughs> you love the new look? I'm just here for the nuts. So take a look at these clips. The Krusty Krab and Chum Bucket are supposed to be directly across from one another. It's been seen like this in so many episodes, guys, but in some of these scenes from Hot Crust Nuts, um, the Chum Bucket just isn't there. Even the path to the Chum Bucket is missing at times. It's just like the Chum Bucket just does not exist in this episode, which is totally a mistake. But guys, this next mistake is way worse. This one is really, really really bad. Huh? Hey everybody, this table's got that smoky Texas tag. Uh, no, stop it! Be <laughs> restaurant! No! So when all the incidentals start freaking out and eating the Krusty Krab, I want you to watch this in slow motion from the outside because the animators were really lazy with all of these incidentals. For one, they have no pupils. They have like literal just blank white eyes. Same thing with their mouth and multiple of them are duplicated. Like look at how many times the one with a blue shirt and a cowboy hat is shown. The main thing here is just they were very lazily drawn for this one section. And I get it, it's a quick section where they just eat the crusty crab, but yeah, there should have been some more effort put into these incidentals. This isn't season one, it's season 13. First up is the very, very, very iconic episode, Pizza Delivery. Like this episode is so good and gives me so many memories. Basically, SpongeBob and Squidward are sent on a mission by Mr. Krabs to deliver a pizza, even though the crusty crab is like a burger place. Uh, here's some clips from the episode. They are hilarious. <laughs> Dude, dude, now I really want pizza. Like, I don't know about you guys, but I would totally have a slice of a crusty crab pizza, even though it's made out of Krabby Patties, as you can see in this clip. But anyways, let's get into this episode's first mistake, and let's see if you guys can spot it on your own. Here's some clips. We don't deliver, but you do. Antenna, check. Bumper, check. Bumper, sticker. Check. Okay, so here's what's going on here. When SpongeBob checks the tire pressure on one of the car's tires, the hubcap disappears. Originally, there is a hubcap, as you can see in this shot, but during that one scene, the hubcap is just gone, making for a weird continuity error. And there's more. Here's mistake number two. Keep those eyes peeled. Front end. Check. Antenna. Check. Bumper. Check. Bumper. Sticker. 
Check. Back it up! Give me the wheels, my fuck! Give me the wheels! Back up! Back up! Back again! No! Backing up. Well, you backed up. And you know what else? We're in the middle of nowhere! Okay, so the delivery boat, as you can see, is white and purple on the sides and front, but the rear has a classic red stripe. Well, it starts out as red, but when the boat is spinning down the road during this scene, it has a purple tint, but to make matters even worse, it actually turns entirely purple when it breaks down. At first, the stripe is red, as you can see in this shot, but then it just randomly turns purple. I guess the animators forgot about it being red, but anyways, let's move over to episode number two, which has even more mistakes. Let's do it. Up next is an episode with a very intriguing name, the Krabby Patty that ate Bikini Bottom. Sounds like a horror movie. In this episode, a Krabby Patty grows too large after Sandy adds one of Sandy's scientific ingredients to it. It's a very interesting plot. I personally like this episode, here are some clips summarizing it. This is the result of an experimental growth serum I developed. It could easily feed a lot of hungry people. <gasps> or supply an entire fast food restaurant, lowering its operating cost. Administer the growth serum. <laughs> there. So, uh, how big is this thing supposed to get? Hey, who cares? It's an endless supply of free patties. <laughs> Easy, boy. Easy. <laughs> Yeah, Mr. Krabs, you are crazy, dude. Like, you risked everything. You risked so many people's lives just to potentially make more money with your stupid Krabby Patties. But anyways, what's also stupid in this episode is the mistakes. There's a couple of them. Let's see if you guys can spot the first one without my help. Did I already show you my single-wheeled roller skates? Or my helicopter that's powered by coconut milk? Actually, I'm not really interested in all that. Well, is there something in particular you wanted to see? Tell me about your giant soybean. This is the result of an experimental growth serum I developed. I sure would hate to see it fall into the wrong hands. Someone who might just use it to try to get... Rich, can I borrow your telephone? It's ringing. Ah, Mr. Krabs, I came as soon as I got the call. Uh, did you bring a Krabby Patty like I was planning to ask you to do? Aye, aye, Captain. Perfect! So here's the thing, Sandy's tree dome, right? The inside of it, there's no water. There's no water at all. We kind of talked about it in the last episode, right? No water. So there should be no bubbles inside her tree dome, right? Well, in Sandy's tree dome in this episode, bubbles appear during motion as if it's underwater. Take a look at some of these shots. Normally when SpongeBob characters are underwater and they move around, there'll be little bubble animations, right? But inside Sandy's tree dome, that should not happen. But during this occasion, where Mr. Krabs put puts the phone down. Look, look, why are there bubble animations? It also happens when he picks it up. Look, there's bubble animations again. So if you understand animation in SpongeBob, this is definitely a mistake. And there's more. This episode has another mistake. Let's see if you guys can spot this one. Oh my goodness! I almost forgot to flip that one. <laughs> Squidward, why'd you make that weird noise? <laughs> Krabby Patty is on a rampage! A bell and ah! It's a crab alert! Hold it! And just what is it you two think you're doing? We're getting out of here! You can't just leave! Do you have a better idea? Stay and work? Now, this one is admittedly kind of a nitpick because this is a cartoon, right? But it's still a continuity error. In the kitchen, as you can see, this monster Krabby Patty eats SpongeBob's left shoe and his sock. But when SpongeBob and Squidward try to exit the restaurant, his sock and shoe reappear for no apparent reason and remain like that for the rest of the episode. Again, it makes sense because it's a cartoon, right? But this is still a bit of a weird continuity error. Maybe SpongeBob has an extra shoe and sock in his work 
Walker. I don't know. But let's move over to episode number three, which has even more crazy mistakes. As you guys know, our girl Sandy over here is quite the daredevil. Like this girl loves extreme sports. Like she is obsessed. Well, this is a major part of the plot in the episode Squirrel Record. Here, take a look at some of these clips. It's really funny. And then we'll get into the mistakes. It's all right here in the Guinness a Ripley Enormous Book of Curiosities, Oddities, and World Records. I swear by the power of Texas, I'm going to break all the records in this here book. Most walnuts in mouth. F on four. Hello. Next. Largest rubber band ball. Next, spiciest chili gargle. <laughs> Ugh, got it. You okay? <laughs> This girl Sandy is like obsessed with breaking a new record. But guys, you know what I'm obsessed with? Exposing animation mistakes and continuity errors in SpongeBob. And here's the first one in this episode. Keep those eyes peeled. Oh my, it's time to go home. Squidward, what are you still doing here? What am I gonna do with you? I can't throw you away. <laughs> I know just what you need. A Krabby Patty. This one might not seem like a mistake at first, but listen closely, Grapple Gang. When SpongeBob puts a patty in his wallet, we get to see the inside of his wallet and we can see his milkshake license. Now I want a milkshake, guys. Comment down below what your favorite milkshake flavor is. But anyways, when he puts the patty in his wallet, we can see his milkshake license. It's right here. But in the next scene, when SpongeBob takes out the patty after Sandy had raw chum, the inside completely changes. Where is his milkshake license? Now it's it's replaced with a picture of a cowboy saying yee-haw. Which, hey, I'm not gonna complain about. It's a funny picture. But at first, he had this in his wallet, and then literally seconds later, it's changed? So I don't think SpongeBob randomly organized his wallet in the middle of a SpongeBob episode. So this was a continuity error. Moving from good old-fashioned SpongeBob to the Patrick Star Show, our next episode is called The Prehistoric Patrick Star Show. It's kind of like a spin-off episode where they go back in time. It's interesting. Here's some clips. I think it's personally a really good episode. Uh, hush up, will ya? I'll get you some food. <laughs> food? <laughs> food! <laughs> Plants, not food! See, like I said, it's actually pretty good. I feel like the Patrick Star show gets way too much criticism, guys. Like the show isn't perfect, but it is a good show. It has some funny moments. But anyways, what we're here to talk about isn't funny moments. We're here to talk about mistakes. It's why you clicked on the video. So here's the first mistake from this episode. Let's see if you guys can spot it without my help. Oh, oh, me, Patrick Cave Star, and me live with Cave Parents. This be Cave Dad. This me cave mom! Hi! This me cave! And this! This me cave show! Were you able to catch it? Well, when Patrick Cavestar introduces his show at the end of the theme song, part of his outfit changes and gains an extra spot. At first, the outfit looks like this, and it's pretty consistent throughout the episode. 
but during this one part at the end of the theme song, his outfit is looking weird, man, and it has this extra spot here, which I guess isn't that big of a deal, but it's still a continuity error, and this episode has two. Here's the next one. Let's see if you guys can find it without me helping you guys. I hate spicy food. Huh? Dinosaur milk ice cream. Oh. <laughs> Hello? Me not pray. <laughs> now it's time for sneak attack. <laughs> This one happens fast, but when Patrick Cavestar finds a prehistoric version of Walter the Waiter selling dinosaur milk ice cream, this is a really cool reference because it's the same dude from the first Spongebob movie from Goofy Goobers. He makes these sundaes, as you can see right here. But anyways, when Patrick Cavestar finds him, um, Patrick's brown beard is just missing. It's just they forgot to draw it during this one scene, and it's, it's pretty funny. But let's keep the video going, guys, and head back over to Spongebob. This next episode is hilarious. The episode Friendiversary, which has a ton of mistakes in it. I'm surprised this episode just aired and it's filled to the brim with mistakes. Let's see if you guys can catch them. <laughs> Happy friend anniversary, Squidward! It's all here in my Squidward memory book. What? Here's us at camp. Here's when I moved in right next door. Look at you, just like an angel. So this first one is a good old-fashioned animation error, where you can see it's a blatant mistake with the animation. I don't know what exactly happened here, but when SpongeBob shows his memory book to Squidward, um, Squidward's neck is to weaken because it's completely disconnected from his body. To be fair, it's only for a few seconds, but I mean, I'm zooming in on this. Look at that, man. How did that even happen? Yeah, poor Squidward, man. His neck is just, is not, is not how it's supposed to be, but let's keep it moving. There's more mistakes in this episode. Here's mistake number two. I so this one is really bad, and honestly, it's one of the worst mistakes I've seen in season 13. So as you can see here, this is how the interior of Squidward's house looks, okay? He has like green wallpaper on his walls, and his floor is pink. We've seen it in so many episodes. Just take a look at this shot from Slimy Dancing. Well, I don't know what the animators were up to in this episode, because take a look at this shot from Friendiversary, as when SpongeBob's going into his house, his house's interior is Squidward house. It's funny because Squidward's door is open in this shot too and you can literally see his interior and it's like they just copied and pasted it to Spongebob's. This is how Spongebob's interior is supposed to look. You can even just see it from the Wikipedia page. But in this episode, they were feeling extremely lazy and just gave Spongebob the wrong inside to his house. Like, I'm honestly flabbergasted about this one. I don't even use that word often, guys. Flabbergasted. But your boy is flabbergasted. And believe it or not, that ain't even it. This episode has more mistakes. Here's the third one. Remember the first time I startled you into this trash can? I go away! Go away! Three mistakes in one episode, and this is a new episode. You'd think the animators would know about the mistakes, but anyways, this one isn't as bad. But normally, as you can see in this shot, Patrick's house has a path. But in Friendiversary, the path to Patrick's house appears and disappears multiple times throughout the episode. It's really weird. In this shot, it's here. and this shot, it's not there. So I don't know what was going on with this one, but the animators made a lot of mistakes, guys. But let's keep it moving and head over to another new season 13 episode. Yeah. Let's Let's keep it moving. First up is the season 8 episode, Bubble Troubles. This episode is all about Spongebob and Patrick being idiots like normal. By the way, never call anybody an idiot, kids, but Spongebob and Patrick are not very smart in this episode because they ruin Sandy's oxygen supply. As you guys know, Sandy's a squirrel, she isn't a fish, so she needs air. And in this episode, Spongebob and Patrick really mess up. Here are some clips of what happens. No spice. Mm. <laughs> Hot sauce! Sandy! Sandy! Check out these new 
new spicy bubbles that Patrick invented. Well, I'd love to try out your newfangled bubbles, Patrick, but I've got to fix these airlines to my tree dome. <laughs> SpongeBob, Patrick, you guys could have like killed Sandy. Like she even starts passing out at one point because she's feeling woozy due to not having enough air. Crazy plot. But the mistake in this episode is really interesting. It shows that the writer of this episode needs to go back and watch old SpongeBob. Let's see if you guys can catch it. Luckily, I have just enough air in my submarine to get to the surface and refill my air tanks. Phew, thank goodness. Allow me to get the door. Even I knew that was dumb. How's Sandy doing back there? Not sure. Let me check. Oh. Hey there, Patty Pat, 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 Patrick. Careful where you're breathing. She seems fine. Hold on just a little longer, Sandy. We're almost there. I can see sunlight. This one's bad, so be prepared, okay? In the episode, there's a point where Sandy thinks she needs to drive her submarine to the surface to get more air, right? Because they're at Bikini Bottom, it's underwater. Sandy's a squirrel, so she needs air from the surface. But here's the thing. Back in the classic, iconic episode, Pressure, it's confirmed that Sandy can quite literally just walk up to the shore. As you can see right now in these clips, she literally walks to the shore. So whoever wrote this episode, Bubble Troubles, needs to go back and educate themselves on OG Spongebob. Like, this one's just disappointing because Pressure is an iconic episode, but I'm rambling. Let's move over to episode number two and see what mistakes are in that episode. Next up is Patrick Man, and this episode's pretty good, but of course, I mean, it's in this video. It has a mistake, guys. Every episode of Spongebob pretty much has a mistake, but here's this episode's mistake. Let's see if you can catch it. Another Krabby Patty for the gentleman. Thank you. Let's hope Patrick Man doesn't come confiscate this one. Patrick is taking things too far. Hey, that's Patrick, man, dear. What are you doing out there? Something a non-hero civilian could never understand. No! Away with the Swiftness! Villains and criminals, beware! Patrick, man, is... Did you catch it? Well, if you didn't, let me give you some context. This right here is Patrick Man, and as you can see, he has a backward P on his attire. It's a part of his outfit. It's there whenever we see Patrick in this outfit, but when he appears in this kitchen right here, um, where is the backwards P? It's gone. It's just disappeared. The animators just didn't draw it. First it's there, but in this one shot, I guess they just weren't feeling it. They weren't feeling it, and it's not there, so yeah, mistake. Let's keep it moving though, guys. I have another episode with more wild mistakes. Next episode is a space affair to remember. Another episode of the Patrick Star Show, as I just said. This one is pretty good. I'm not the biggest fan of the plot, I guess. I mean, the episode's fun. Don't get it twisted, but I don't know. I'll let you guys decide for yourselves. Here are some clips summarizing the episode. <sighs> Got you something for your special day! Reservations to the Atropolis All You Can Eatatorium! Enjoy the finest cuisine in ancient Greece! Okay, the only way! Gee, Willikers! Who knew ancient Greece was so. Species. Well, what did you think? Let me know in the comments. Do you think it's a good plot? I don't know. But what I know that isn't good in this episode is this mistake. There's only one and it happens quick, but it's still a really bad mistake. Take a look. Never before in the history of this contest have I seen anything so incredibly Weird. Congratulations! You're officially weirdos! This is the perfect anniversary! Yeah, that's a shame the kids aren't here to see it. There are more of you! Please welcome your children! We kinda had a house. 
this party while you guys were gone? Are you mad? Not at all, son. Your mother and I had the best time we've had in years. So here's the deal. When Benny and Cecil tell Patrick about their day at the space station, um, half of Bunny's lipstick appears to be missing. It happens really quickly. Like, here's a shot of her with the lipstick normal. It covers her whole, like, you know, her lips. But here's the shot where half of it's missing. Like, I don't even know how the animators made this mistake. It's a very strange one, but yeah, it's a mistake for sure. Next up is the season eight episode, Smooth Jazz at Bikini Bottom. This episode is all about SpongeBob and Squidward trying to sneak backstage for a concert. After they end up losing their passes, the concert's a Kelpie G concert, which is hilarious to me. Kelpie G is iconic. But anyways, here's some clips from the episode. I see all you fellow Kelpheads at the show. <laughs> just keep your friends' outbursts under control. I just love this too. Hey, hey, a fellow mellow jazz dazzler. What's happening? Nothing like a little accompaniment to bring out the genius of Kelpie's kazoo playing, huh, guys? Thanks for the grub. <laughs> We're in, SpongeBob. Now I'll finally get to meet the incomparable Kelpie. Hey, this is a private area. Only people with backstage passes can come back here. Read my lips. No backstage passes, no entry, huh? Yeah, I love this episode. I think it's really funny, and I always love when SpongeBob and Squidward are kind of forced to, like, team up together. But what isn't so funny is the mistake in this episode. Let's see if you guys can catch it. You're winning caller number 102. Not only have you won two front row seats, but you and a friend will go backstage to meet Kelpie G himself. Me and a friend. Oh, can you believe it? We're gonna meet your hero! So nice to be surrounded by such kindred spirits. Who's ready for a Kelpie G concert tonight? Was it you who brought the raucous miscreant? Me? No, of course not, no. It's very easy to miss, but here's the thing. When SpongeBob and Squidward are at the Kelpie G concert, they are the only ones with backstage passes, even though everyone else should also have a backstage pass, right? Like, this was such a main plot point in the episode. Why don't all of these other Squidward-looking head dudes have their own backstage passes? So, yeah, weird mistake. And last but not least is the episode Don't wake Patrick. This episode is all about Patrick sleepwalking and just, yeah, here, I'll let these clips summarize what happens in this episode. Pay attention because it's really good. Huh, I don't remember making such a mess. And I'm pretty sure I didn't eat spaghetti. Huh? Oh, hey, Patrick. Okay, 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 it's time for mistakes, guys. There is one really bad mistake in this episode. Keep those eyes peeled, watch closely. So this one is very easy to miss, but during the scene where Patrick is sleepwalking through traffic, like I have no idea how this man didn't get hit by a car, well, take a look at these incidentals, because none of them were drawn with pupils. You can see they have their eyes, but there's no pupils, and guys, I'm sorry, but that's a mistake. Well, that's going to do it for today's video, but really quickly, don't click off yet, guys. If you're new and you want to talk to me, Cartoon Corey, make sure to subscribe as I respond to the comments of all subscribers. So if you click subscribe right now and leave a comment, I'll respond for sure within the next two or three days. So click subscribe, do it, and leave that comment right now if you want to talk to me. Also, if if you guys are looking for more SpongeBob content, click this video right here, which has some of the craziest mistakes we've ever covered, guys. This video has tons of mistakes, so go and click it. I'll see you guys over on that video.